Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, exciting to be in this first week, um, game week. I know a uh, long time coming, and you know our guys have, uh, you know, they're the ones that have waited a long time. You know, I, we as coaches, um, it's certainly not about us. So we're really excited about our guys. We're really excited about our preparation leading into the into this week, and, and Wyoming is going to be a, a heck of a challenge for us in a really a tremendous environment for college football. So excited for for our guys. Um, Excited for the opportunity in front of us, and you know, with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Coach, what are some of Wyoming's biggest strengths? Well, certainly experience. I, I think that's the the first one. You know, you any any of the positions across the board, with maybe the exception of punter. Um, you know, those those kids have all played in games, and a lot of them have played a a ton of football. Um, they have depth uh, because of of all that experience, and. and and I think that would be the first thing. You know, I think offensively, um, from a running perspective, you know, uh, Xavier Valade is a tremendous back, but there's a couple guys behind him, Trey Smith, um, you know, uh, Titus Swen. I mean, they can roll a few guys at you. Quarterbacks can run in O-line. I think the experience up there speaks for itself. Defensively, you know, I, I think it'll be interesting. A lot of the guys up front didn't play last year. Um, so I know when I was there, obviously, we were thin up front, but those guys that played did a, a tremendous job. And then you add the guys that didn't play last year. Um, you know, so I think the front seven in particular will be very formidable. So you know, it's obviously a unique situation where I know as much about them as I do uh, in trying to help our guys out as much as I can. We just have to go out there and, and still go out there and play and, and give them everything we have, though. What are some last minute things that you're hoping to clean up prior to going to learn? Well, I, I think you know, preparation-wise, um, you know, we started with with Wyoming back last Thursday, and it's still a methodical preparation. You know, we've been primarily base downs um, these first few days. We'll transition into, you know, or we transition today into some situational football, so third down, red zone, and we'll continue to do that. So it's just it's completing the the you know the the game plan, the preparation. Not that the game the game plan has been complete, but just completing that preparation the next few days. Well, it's uh, it's unique for me in, in, in my career. I, I we've we've played against some people that I've coached with, or um, some of those ideas have maybe overlapped from time to time. But as far as this situation, um, it is extremely unique. I, and I think the the schemes aside, I think you, you you know the knowledge of the players, the individuals, um, the, the the talent, the ability. I think is uh, you know is something that I feel like. Whether it's helpful or not, you know who they are and what they can what they can do that can really pose problems. So, um, yeah, we're you know trying to utilize that the best to the best of our ability. I know on the, conversely, they'll have a good sense for what we are schematically um, for sure. And and um, you know, like I said before, I think it's just we got to get our guys out there and, and, and let them play and go after it and play as, play as hard as they can. You share with those guys, with your guys, you know, the kind of the you know strengths and weaknesses of each of those players. Because like I say, you know those guys. So for sure, yeah. I think uh, you know it, it's a lot of it's a lot of accolades for a lot of guys, you know, and, and and you know it's it's a situation where yeah, I'm gonna you know anything I can share with our guys that's gonna help our guys succeed on on Saturday, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share with them. Um, you have Justice Perkins jumping to, to number one in center. What uh, what specifically kind of made him get up to that? Spot? Yeah, uh, uh, good question. And I know I referred to Justice a few times through camp. Um, it was it was opportunity for him. Um, you know, Cole Sane had had a, an injury setback through camp. He's back now, but um, you know the opportunity presented itself for Justice, and 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 he jumped on it. Um, was uh, relative to his performance in the spring. Took a big. Big leap forward as far as uh, you know what he was able to bring to the table. Had a really good summer, and that's not to say that uh, that Cole didn't. Uh, Cole's just missed some time. Cole's back now, and we'll see how it uh, plays out. Not only this coming Saturday, but as the season goes along. What can you say about Tyrell's status? Uh, Tyrell will miss this week. Um, you know he'll be probably a little bit. I would say week to week right now. Uh, we hope to get him back as soon as possible, but he won't. He won't be making this trip. Anything specifically about his? Uh, his uh, lower body injury that he'll he'll be recovering from and is recovering already. So just uh, was a little too quick to make this trip. And obviously that now Ty is in his spot and, and Trey is in 
Yeah, you know, when we brought uh, Trey in, I think, you know, Ty was the key. Ty Okada was the key to us, you know, really trying to get the best five out there um, because Ty could play strong, he could play free, he could play nickel where he's playing in, in this game. Um, obviously, a guy like Tyrell has the ability to play corner as well as nickel. So, um, you know, we get Tyrell back. Um, you know, when that time comes down the road, uh, you know, Tyrell will most likely get inserted somewhere. Um, but they, yeah, tr uh, Ty was the key uh, as far as us being able to get the best five. And, and you know, I, we feel like Trey and Jeff Manning have earned the right to start. Um, I know Rylan Ort's going to see the field as well at strong safety. That also gave us some flexibility to, to move Ty over as well. So, uh, you know, feel good about um, Tyrell coming back for sure um, in, in due time and, and really feel good about where Ty Okada is right now at the nickel spot. Well, yeah, um, Coach Weshy, you know, he's done a tremendous job. I know Coach Purcell before him. Um, and, you know, those guys, uh, I think, on top of uh, coming from a good program, they're right here in Bozeman. And I, I think playing for the Bobcats is something that's, that's really important for them. I, I know in Justice's case, his dad, Josh, played, played here. Uh, so he's Bobcat through and through, and, and, and that matters. Uh, it matters um, about your commitment to the program. It matters. It, you know, I think how quickly you adapt. Um, so yeah, I think it's twofold. Uh, you know, not only has the Hawks program been very successful under Coach Weshy, and, and and they've they've won a lot of games. I think they know how to play football the right way. And then also, uh, you know, the fact that those guys are our Cats fans from day one. What's the impact of Justice's uh, skill set? Um, uh, very athletic, uh, quick, uh, you know, quick first step in particular, and that's important uh, at the center position. You know, um, centers can come in all shapes and sizes. I know adversely on the other side, Keegan Kreider is a, a really big individual that that, is, that had played for us at Wyoming and is still there. Um, you know, those are, are you put those two guys next to each other, they wouldn't look anything alike. But I, you know, I think with with justice, um, it's his quickness, um, and, and like I said, uh, he had a really good summer. So strength-wise, I think, you know, uh, his strength caught up with that athleticism, um, and has put put himself in position to, you know, earn a right to get on the game field. Uh, Luke Pollock was enlisted on the on the depth chart. With me. Yeah, Luke is. Uh, uh, he's going to be maybe be out for an extended period of time right now. Um, still working through that process. Uh, that was about a, a kind of a mid-fall camp. Injury for him. Um, I, I know, you know, Blake has uh, stepped up. They were competing, you know, as uh, Luke went down essentially, and, and um, felt good about the direction they were both going. So, you know, I, I trust that we will get Luke back in the fold at some time. I just don't know when that's going to be, but have been pleased with Blake, um, you know, and his ability to step in and take over both the place kicking and the, the kickoff duties. Any other injuries you can disclose? Um, uh, Nate Stewart. You know, isn't on the list listed as well. Nate will be out for an extended period of time. Um, but those three, Nate, uh, Tyrell, and uh, and Luke, are really the ones right now. Um, I know Spy Blake Hill is ahead of Byron Rollins on the on the D tackle. That's our, what 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 is it really about Blake? Um, you know, I think uh, you know we put a two deep on the interior. I do think we have the the ability to play. Play five or six, and, and Byron would be in that mix. Um, but I, I, you know, I think with Blake, uh, you know, we brought him for uh, a good reason. Uh, I mean, we thought he could add to our depth. Um, we thought he could make an immediate impact. Uh, uh, strong um, moves real well. I think play, has played. You know, and one of the things that really jumped out at us off his film at Tarleton in particular was he played with a, a tremendous motor. Um, and he's shown that, you know, as, as he's become more and more comfortable in these weeks leading up to this first game um, with the scheme, he's continued to, you know, show the things that we hoped he would, um, you know, good strength, good movement, and then uh, that just to be able to play really hard. And that's so important up front. Yeah, he's bounced around so much. I mean, uh, everybody's obviously hungry to get out there, but I imagine him with all the schools he's been to is probably especially up there, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, finding his finding his way and finding home um, has been a challenge for him more so than most. Uh, this being his fourth landing spot, but I, I do think he's fit in well. Um, 
you know, I know he's got a number of years left, so hopefully this is just the beginning of a, um, a long, steady career here at Montana State. Uh, in place of Nate, it looks like uh, Andrew Patterson. Um, what, what can you say about him? What's in place of him? Yeah, Andrew is one of uh, two true freshmen that we're bringing along on the trip. Um, Simeon Woodard at corner would be the other. And, and those two guys, uh, uh, pretty early on, you know, I think those are two positions, corner and, and receiver, where guys can play early. Um, but from a skill set perspective, uh, you know, Andrew's throw, showing his ability to, to catch the ball first, um, to really pick things up pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, I know we got him the ball a few times in that first scrimmage, and, and he was able to, to, to be electric with the ball in his hands. So, you know, he became um, an early, I guess, target as far as those true freshmen that could help us. And, and, you know, I'm sure he'll show up on special teams as well. So pleased with Andrew's progression and um, Simeon's as well. you expect to forego those red shirts for those guys, or is that kind of a play by years? Yeah, you know, I think, I think at this point we would be looking at, at being a long-term decision for both of them, barring um, – Something unforeseen right now, which which could happen. I, that four game rule does protect you against whatever unforeseen might be. But uh, I think we'd anticipate that both those guys will be making all the trips and, and contributing throughout the year. It's just we talked about the the layoff and how long it's been. I mean, now that it's game week, and what do you sense from guys? I mean, just specifically how hungry they are and how to get back. Yeah, you know, uh, I think when we flipped to Wyoming on Thursday, there was a there was a buzz, I think, but more even more so today that we're in game week. Um, you know, and that's not to say there's a little bit of uncertainty as well. It's been a long time, and we have plenty of guys that haven't played, so we're going to have to work through that, you know, balancing that excitement, because excitement can only carry you so far. Um, we need our guys going into this game. Um, feeling confident, you know, and, and, and breaking through some of that uncertainty. You know, those guys that either haven't, you know, played in a long time or, or the, the new guys that haven't played at all. I, I think uh, that's what the rest of this week is, is, is for, is to continue to prepare us to continue to gain confidence in, in what we're doing. Because um, I, I know this, we're going to have to go down there and play really well, uh, really well to be in the game really well to win the game, um, and you play well by knowing what you're doing and doing it as fast as you can. Have you exchanged any words with Coach Bull recently? Or? Uh, going back to the summer, um, you know, I guess since we flipped into August, we haven't spoke at all. I will have a chance to visit, I, I'm sure, before and after, and then you know, pretty regularly after. But I, I think as we both have prepared our, our teams, it's just kind of leaving it at that and um, probably having to talk about each other more than we actually talking to each other. It's going to be a little weird being in the, uh, the guest uh, locker room for the stadium. Yeah, and, and you know, I've, I was on the other side once at NDSU in, in I think, 2008. We played out there, so that's the, that's the last time I was in that locker room. I've been by it several times since then. Um, but, yeah, it'll be, it'll be different, but, you know, it's um, we're Montana State right now, and, and – uh, it's about putting our, our team out there, giving ourselves the best chance and not you know, worrying and recollecting and all that kind of stuff. Coulter, do you have anything? Yes, I do. Hey, Coach. Hey. Thanks for taking a minute. Uh, you mentioned uh, just sort of the, the strangeness about coaching against Coach Bull, but uh, he's been a head coach for a really long time and had a lot of success as a head coach. What sort of things have you taken from him or learned from him as now you embark on your first season as a head coach? Well, I, I, you know, I guess certainly relative to this this matchup, making it about the guys, you know, not getting caught up. I think you know he's done a great job of of that over the years. Um, you know, making it about just that, getting our players ready to go, and, and um, certainly not becoming the, the focal point of, of much of anything. So I, I know I learned that. I, I know um, you know a prepared team. Um, is, is the best one that has a chance to win, uh, best one that has a chance to be in a game in the fourth quarter. And I, I think, you know, um, getting your team to believe. And, and, and I think those things, no matter what team that we had the past 18 seasons that I worked um, with him, I think every Saturday we showed up with a team that believed. And that's, that's our charge this week is to get the Bobcats to believe we can go down there and. Um, not only be in the game, but win the game. So, um, you know, that's – I threw a bunch of things at you there, Coulter, but I, that's my best answer. You 
mentioned Valaday, the running back, and he's been very, very productive, especially these last couple of years. But what about his talent to make him such a good player? Well, I, I think the biggest thing I would point to, he has continued to get better and better. You know, he was a guy that in 18 flashed a little bit, but was, was still undersized, I would say. Speed-wise was just okay, but he's gotten um, considerably better each year. And he's gotten, I know right now, from a size perspective, um, he, looks to, he looks to be different than he was even last fall. Um, you know, so he's become a more complete back in every which way. His ability to catch the football um, has always made him a threat out of the backfield. So, you know, uh, just a kid that, you know, now that's a man that is, is, is never been satisfied with even a shred of success. He's always pushing the limits and tough as nails. And, um, you know, he was a guy that I know the last couple of years in particular that you could count on every Saturday showing up and, you know, giving you everything you had. When you look at Wyoming's defense, I know that it's sort of similar schemes where you guys are now running at Montana State. So uh, is, does that help you when you're preparing for, for it since you guys have sort of been going against yourselves here the last month or so? You know, I think the familiarity with, with the four-down look um, and a lot of the same alignments helps us, you know. and, and But we know they're going to be sound and they're, they're going to keep the ball in, in front of them. Uh, they're not going to make too many mistakes. Um, so. It comes down to really executing and playing hard, and that, that sounds simple, but it's, it's really hard. I, I think teams like you know like this that we maybe feel like we know some things about are in some ways you feel like they're maybe easy to prepare for, but really hard to to beat. The, the teams that are all over the place schematically and and um, are sometimes hard to prepare for, but then easy to win or easy to beat. So I, I think you know Wyoming would fall in that category. I, you know maybe there's some sense of familiarity that might seem easy, but uh, I've been preaching to the guys that, uh, you know, it's going to be hard for them to, to be in the wrong place. Um, so we have to, you know, we have to outplay them. We have to out-execute. Um, and that's, that's going to really be what it comes down to. Seems like with Sean Chambers, the quarterback is healthy. That gives Wyoming a pretty darn good shot to, to win. So I know you had a hand in, in helping recruit and develop him, at least early in his career. So uh, what sort of things do you think he brings to the table and, and what makes him uh, a dangerous weapon for Wyoming's offense? Well, he's a tremendous runner. And I think um, that's where it kind of started. He's a, very athletic. He's a tremendous leader, was able to be a leader um, unlike any true freshman, I guess, I've ever been around. And he, he is a developing passer. Um, you know, I, I think the, the gains that he had made between 19 and 20 were significant. It just so happened that he threw one pass in 20. Um, you know, so I, I'm certain that he's picked up where he left off as far as his preparation, you know, relative to 2020 and, and you know, becoming more and more uh, complete where it doesn't have to be all about his ability to run the football. So, um, you know, Sean is a tremendous talent, tremendous leader, um, you know, and, and has a fair amount of experience, even though each one of these last three seasons have been cut short. And Chad Bum is the guy that stands out defensively, um, but it seems like where he's from in Colorado there, it seems like there's a lot of good linebackers in that area. So I guess two-part question, what do you think makes Mama really good for Wyoming? But also, why do you think it is that it's sort of region, regionally, it seems like Wyoming can get guys like that quite often because it seems like there's a lot of good ones, especially at that position, uh, just in the general area. Well, Chad, uh, Chad can really run. I think that's the thing that, that, that to me, separates him. Um, Chad's dad played for the for the Pokes um, and he's from Wyoming. They they Chad grew up in Denver, um, you know. So he had uh, the cowboy blood in him uh, from a young age, but was a guy I think that needed to be developed still, you know. So I, I think um, going back to recruiting, you know, he was a little bit um, on the light side, but I I think both his um, his knowledge of of the, our program and and his his you know developmental potential I think was the attractive nature and I, I think that's probably you know you, re you referenced the area um, you know Logan Wilson not too much different out of out of Casper who was a developing guy he played receiver and corner and, and you know Logan preceded um, Chad at that that Mike position so you know I think there's just you know uh, I think that's part of uh, the success of Wyoming. Um, 
in the success of Coach Bowl as a, as a head coach, just being able to identify guys that have the, the capacity and the desire to develop into something that, um, you know, can become this guy like Chad, who is a bona fide pro prospect here going into 21, and it's, it's well-deserved. Chad's a great, um, great person beyond his ability on the football field, and, and you know, I'm sure his leadership um, role has continued to grow. So, you know, he's, a, he's definitely a guy that's, that's high on that list that we'll have to, to keep tabs on for sure. A couple more for me, Coach. Thanks for taking so much time. Uh, I'm doing stories on both your coordinators and sort of their debuts, call and plays at Division One level. So uh, I'll start with Taylor Housewright. I know that uh, he really liked his energy and his innovative ideas, but uh, how do you think he's navigated his first six or seven months running an offense? And has it been like you expected it would be? Yeah, I've appreciated, uh, you know, Taylor coming in and stepping into that leadership role. You know, and that leadership role isn't just, I think it gets viewed as it's just the players, but it's it's a coaching staff as well. And, you know, um, I think he's done a tremendous job. You know, he's he's coaching with four guys that were on the previous staff, um, you know, listening to a head coach who was a, a coordinator for the last 12 years. So... He's handled those, I think, both sides of that very well. You know, working with the staff, listening to their ideas, um, listening to, to my thoughts um, as we've we've gone through it, and, and you know, I think um, really pleased with just you know that's not that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. There's got to be a, a planned out uh, maturity that goes along with it, um, and you know, Taylor's done that to, to my liking to this point, and, and you know, I think we got an offense that. Is is within the, you know the, the range of, of what I what I want as a head coach and, and you know I think we have a chance to to really play to our strengths um, you know throughout the season I think you know he's um, like you said he's he's innovative but I think he still understands that that football is one um, you know with simple things too with being fundamentally sound being more physical and, and you know that's how I see the game as well. It seems like Coach Banks has a pretty darn good gauge on what the, the defense needs, particularly from an energy level, but also uh, just in terms of adjusting personnel and things like that. So what have you thought of his first six or seven months on the job? Yeah, you know, much much like Taylor, I, I think it's, you know, ready for this job, um, ready for this task to lead, uh, you know, not only a group of players but a, a staff and, and, you know, really implementing a, um, a new scheme that had, had – some carryover, but at the same time, it was, uh, you know, it was quite different than, than before. And that's, you know, a couple coaches a part of that and certainly a lot of players. And, you know, um, I think the thing about Freddie is uh, I think he knows, he knows what he wants and, and he can communicate uh, that with, with both the coaches and the players very well. And, um, you know, very meticulous, uh, very detail-oriented. And I, I think to play great defense, you need that. Um, you can't just gloss over things, you know, whether that's in your preparation, whether that's, you know, studying your opponents, um, whether it's on the practice field with, with just the little things. Um, you know, Freddie's got a really keen eye for, for how this defense is supposed to look and um, doesn't let anything slip. So I, I think that's what I've appreciated about him. And, you know, I, I think he's going to have a group of guys that, you know, are, are going to be in the right place and, and play really hard. And that's, you know, you do that, you got a, a chance to have success. And when you look at it, there's uh, three new coordinators because you're no longer in Wyoming as, as well. Tim Polasek at, at Wyoming, and I think the D.C. Wyoming what second year there as well. So what do you think that dynamics like? The fact that you're gonna have three guys calling plays for their teams for, uh, for the first time. Yeah, it's uh, you know that doesn't happen all too often um, where it's where it's that much new uh, on the side of play calling. You know, Tim's called plays before um, at North Dakota State. He hasn't. You know, call that was post Coach Bowl, um, but he coached with us at NDSU. So, you know, I, I'm certain that Tim's, um, you know, brought some new ideas, whether it's his experience at Iowa um, or, or even his time after we left NDSU. Uh, you know, so I'm sure he's made some some changes. But I, I'd imagine, you know, they're still going to be grounded in the very same principles because that, in a lot of ways, is Coach Bowl more than it is myself um, over the last dozen years. And I know Jay on on defense. Um, you know, I really appreciated a, you know opportunity working with Jay. You know, uh, very very fundamental, uh, very uh, sound in his thinking on defense. Um, 
it was a weird year last year in 2020. You typically get to know, um, you know, a new coach pretty well over the course of the year, but with with COVID and and Zoom and no spring ball and very limited fall camp, we didn't go against each other as much as. Uh, you know, we typically would have, but really appreciate who Jay was as a person and a coach. And, and you know, um, there's a reason that Coach Bowl chose him um, when he had a, you know, a hole to replace the previous year. And I think Jay fit in really well and, 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 and had them going um, certainly the right direction in 20. And I, I'm, I'm certain, you know, they will in 21 really be, be really good on defense. And last question for me, Coach. Uh, thanks again for taking the time. Uh, the War Memorial Stadium, I'm excited to check it out. I've never been to a game there, but how would you describe it? I mean, does it compare to other venues? I know you've coached around the Missouri Valley and even the Big Sky a little bit, and uh, also, you know, obviously, the Mountain West. But uh, what do you think of the venue? How does it stack up, and what do you expect the atmosphere to be like on Saturday? I think it'll be a tremendous atmosphere. Uh, you know, it's last year was, was partial fans for the two home games that were played there. Um, so it's it's been a long time for the majority of fans in Wyoming. You know, these early early September games were always, uh, um, you know, tremendous crowds. I suspect that'll be the case. And, you know, um, it can be a, it can be a really energized environment. So that's, you know, I, you know, our guys shouldn't have any misgivings that this isn't going to be electric. This isn't going to be a, a, an adverse situation where you got a big crowd that, that's going to be pulling for, pulling for their team and, and certainly rooting against you. Uh, so yeah, a passionate fan base uh, in Wyoming, and, and they, they come from all corners of the state. And I know these uh, afternoon games early in the fall, uh, they really attend. You know, uh, as the season goes along, they get some odd, odd times, some late games, some cold weather games. But I, I know these ones in September have been really well attended, and, and um, you know, just tr just great college football atmospheres that I think would stack up with uh, most everywhere.